Hey, everybody. Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is March 5th. Happy Cinco de Marcho to everybody out there. Taking a look at the Doppler radars overlaid with the visible satellite imagery. You can see the sun rise across the Pacific Ocean. This is our next system out here. It is bringing some moisture across Northern California and Southern Oregon. Rainfall for the lower elevations and snow for the higher elevations. Still some winter storm warnings associated with that. We'll take a look at those details. We'll take a look at the extended forecast, as always, as we go through the video this morning. And here are those winter storm warnings. And if, watch out if you're going across the Siskiyou Summit there. It's up over 4,000 feet. You could be dealing with winter driving conditions. And same thing near Mount Shasta as well. Now, taking a look at the snowfall forecast on Sacramento, they do show maybe a little bit of snowfall for I-80 there as we go through the day today. And it doesn't take much to make things slick. And we had big rigs spinning out and blocking the roadways there yesterday. So I think people thought the storm was winding down there and people were trying to get across. And it didn't end up well for some areas out there. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Slow down a little bit, especially if you see that compound packed snow and ice on the roadway and any kind of snow falling doesn't take much to make things slick. Although you see the snow level starting to rise by this evening. And remember Donner Pass is up over 7,000 feet. This is a long stretch of high terrain going across I-80 there. That's why it often closes when these extreme storms roll through like what we just went through. Now take a look at the rainfall forecast from this morning, Tuesday. The 4 a.m. Wednesday, some moderate amounts piling up here. Look at that Crescent City, maybe up towards an inch of rainfall there. You can see Shelter Cove, what is that, about an inch and a half maybe, so not bad. And this is the four-day snow report here. So Sugar Bowl, look at that, 10 and a half feet. You can see Soda Springs Caltrans there up towards 10 feet as well. Pretty good forecast overall. You know, you saw a lot of those graphics showing 5 to 12 feet, and that's really what happened for many areas. And very strong winds brought blizzard conditions, so the blizzard forecast was quite well also. And you can see the coastal range got some nice amounts, some of the Klamath range here, and the Cascades didn't do too bad there also. Some of the higher hills, even across the Bay Area, got some snowfall. Now, looking at monthly precipitation averages, check it out. We're looking at Oakland, San Fran, San Jose, and Santa Rosa. Sorry, San Francisco. Bad habit of calling it San Fran. But anyway, looking at April and May, look at the drop-off in the precipitation as we start to go towards the later spring and on in towards the summer months here. You can see San Francisco, for example, three inches down towards about 1.4. And then by May, you're looking at two tenths in June, even lesser amounts. But there's other fun weather phenomena that happen during those time frames as well. Now, looking at rain showers and mountain snow with this next system moving down the coastline here, Southern California. Look at this trace to one inch possible on the grapevine. So, heads up for that on the I 5 corridor there. And this could bring some thunderstorms with it as well. Some small hail and some gusty winds. And yeah, bad snowfall amounts above 6,000 feet. This is also going to bring a round of snow for the Sierra Nevada. I want to point that out also, but nothing like what we just got. Now, this is for Wednesday and Thursday, San Diego National Weather Service up towards a half an inch for the Los Angeles Metro, San Diego. And we we do have things pretty saturated here, and sometimes these mud flows can happen well after those big rainfall events, and sometimes these light ones can actually trigger it here. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind if you're around higher terrain or near those steep slopes. Looking at the week ahead, today and Tuesday, today and Wednesday, mild and dry, near normal, light winds. But then this system's going to impact places like uh, southern Nevada, northern Arizona, portions of Utah as well. Cannot rule out some thunderstorms and some chillier temperatures, breezy conditions before we build a ridge of high pressure as we go on into Friday and the weekend. Now, forecast high temperatures, I just like to point this out because things can be very comfortable. It's a great time of the year to be out and about across portions of Arizona and some of the desert. I mean, look at that, 77 degrees, just picture perfect out there uh, at this time of year when you get the right conditions lining up. And then the system's going to cool things down a little bit here. Then we're going to start to rise the temperatures. And I'll show you that in some of the extended forecasts here in a moment. Day one through three, overall winter storm impacts. Do not let your guard down just yet. There's still some snowfall going to be incoming here, and it only takes light amounts to make things slick. And, of course, you still got that slug of moisture moving through northern California. That's why there's some moderate impacts showing up there as well. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, it's got its own lightning detection system. It tells you the distance, and it tells you, you know, when the last lightning strike occurred. Very fun to watch. Updates every three seconds. And, you know, click on the link down below if you want to save 10% off on that. Stores all the data for you in the cloud. Highly recommend recommended. Now, looking at the North American model, what we're showing here is that there's still some breezy conditions across the higher terrain of the Sierra Nevada and down through the Peninsula Ranges. But as this system pinwheels down the coastline here, you see the stronger northwest winds behind it coming down the coast. And look at the Peninsula Ranges here as we go on into Wednesday afternoon and night, getting pretty strong up there. And some of the desert areas are going to get breezy as well as we go on into the day Thursday. And then you can see that strong northwest wind ripping down across some of Nevada. I shouldn't say strong, but it is going to be breezy out there. You'll notice kind of a temperature drop as we go on into 
through Thursday. But we're going to bounce back here as we go towards the weekend. Now, taking a look at lightning flash density potential, let's roll through this. Not much today, as you can see. Then we go on into Wednesday here. This is about Wednesday noon right there. And you can see some of that threat start to emerge for the central coast. It moves down towards Southern California as we go through the day Wednesday afternoon. And then as we go on through Thursday, that's going to move inland a bit here. It could, you know, it could even get Las Vegas with the thunderstorms in northern Arizona and some of California could still be included in that activity on through Thursday night. Now, this is day three, so I want to back up here to day two, and you can see it does include Southern California. This is for the day Wednesday here, and then it's maybe expanded here as we go into the day three for some of Arizona and uh, Southern Nevada. Now, also, as this system comes across the area, check it out. Significant wave height increase as we go on in through. This starts about, what, uh, Wednesday afternoon for some of Northern California. It creeps down the coastline as we go through the day Thursday. So don't sleep on that wave action here. And then we get a little bit of a break before some systems that could be impacting portions of California. We'll take a look at that in the next slide. But you can see some bigger wave action returning for Oregon, Washington, and trying to get down into California as we go through the weekend as well. Now, this is the GFS hot off the presses here, the 12Z run. There goes the ongoing snowfall across Northern California. System goes down the coastline. It starts to bring a bit of snow back into the Sierra Nevada, probably at some point as we go on into the day tomorrow, Wednesday, Southern California as well. You can see the precipitation for the Los Angeles, San Diego Metro, for some of the central coast is going to get that as well. Some snow for the higher terrain of Utah, Northern Arizona, Nevada might get a thunderstorm here. As you can see, a chilly air mass moving down across some of the Intermountain West. And then we bring another system from here for Northern California as we go on into the day Saturday it and maybe another one as we go through late Sunday night on into Monday morning for central Northern California. We'll see how far those get. You know, things can still change at this time frame. We're looking kind of far off into fantasy land here at the moment. Then the GFS wants to kind of dry us out for a bit. But we'll worry about that as we get closer. Now, looking at the extended forecast, this is something the European does. It goes out 46 days. You can kind of see the suppressed temperatures a bit. But look at this. As we go into mid-March, we might start warming things up a bit here. And then, of course, as we start to go into April, things can definitely get warmer across much of California. You can kind of see the rise of the temperatures here and just kind of going from late winter to kind of the early spring time period here. It's kind of nice to look at that extended forecast it goes all the way out through April 19th. San Francisco, something similar there as well, kind of showing a little bit of a bump there in some of the temperatures. We'll watch that day by day, but just kind of nice to see the temperatures as they start to increase and things become a bit more comfortable out there. Been some pretty chilly overnight lows across some of the Bay Area. There's been some frost warnings the last few mornings also. This is Las Vegas as well. You can kind of see it's that time of year where things can start warming up for sure. But again, it's kind of a fantasy forecast, just something fun to look at here in one of the models. Now, looking at uh, up towards uh, Northern California here, you're looking at some temperatures bouncing back here a bit again as well. You know, kind of suppressed temperatures with some of these storm systems moving through here in Sacramento. You can clearly see the warmer temperatures that start to roll in here by mid-March. And thing, same thing for Phoenix. You start to get these 80-degree days that become quite the regularity as we go on in through April. Now, looking at uh, Donner Summit here on I-80, you can see we've got still some compact snow and ice out there in some places. And again, if you coat the roadway, it can make things quite slick. Uh, so yeah, heads up for that. You know, I mean... You might want to put off travel if you can one more day, but it's definitely going to be better than it was. I'm sure if you take your time and you use caution, you'll be fine crossing the passes most likely. And Donner Summit, you can kind of see a little bit of that increase, maybe another inch or two. So watch out for that snow level still below a lot of the passes out there and some of the higher terrain. Echo Pass, something similar there as well. Shows a little bit of light snow over the next couple of days. And this is Tioga Pass. You can see we are bringing a little bit of snowfall in here as we go, what is today, the 5th? And then we go sixth would be Wednesday, Thursday. You can see that system that's showing that little bit of snowfall here. The snow level is just below 6,000 feet. Sesame plot there as well. And it looks not look, looks not bad right now, but this is going to change over the next couple of days as well. We are going to get some moisture back up over the higher terrain. You can see Sonora Junction there on Highway 395. This is 8 to 14 day temperature outlook. Yeah, you know. Whatever, we'll take it. 8 to 14 day precipitation. Actually, a little below average signal starting to show up here across Southern California. We'll see how that trends over the next few days. And this is something that's been quite nice. We are now above average for this time of the year. This is the entire state up here, as you can see. The Sierra Nevada. Actually, it's central. Let's go to entire state. There we go. Yep, we are above average so far for this time of year. And you can see that trajectory since February 1st, just that rocket launch there as we got into the early portions of March here, getting us above average. We were pretty, we were struggling there pretty good for a while, especially through December and early January, especially. 
And this is something um, that I like looking at once in a while, the significant wildland fire potential outlook. Check out Southern California as we go on in through May, actually below normal here in some of the Sierra Nevada included in that as we go through June. The only issue with this is that we get a lot of precipitation. We can really grow uh, some of the lower elevation vegetation out there. And then that when you get to the summertime can actually burn and make fires even worse. So kind of take that with a grain of salt right now. Still some fire conditions here can be locally bad still with all that new vegetation that may grow and then dry out as we go through the summer months here. So it can still be locally impactful. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll watch this system again here tomorrow and bring a little bit more mountain snow in here as well. But yeah, we'll just continue to check out what's coming through the extended also because we do have a couple frontal systems that go towards the weekend that may impact some of the state of California. And we'll just continue to watch the model ones and see if they trend weaker or stronger with those storms. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.